In the previous lecture, we spoke about Gibbs free energy, and we said that Gibbs free energy is not the same thing as change in enthalpy. However, the two terms, the two concepts are related. So let's examine what the relationship is between Gibbs free energy or change in Gibbs free energy given by delta G and our delta H, our change in enthalpy. So, change in Gibbs free energy under standard state conditions is equal to change in H, our change in enthalpy under standard state conditions, minus the temperature in Kelvin multiplied by our change in S also under standard state conditions. So, change in S is simply our change in entropy between our products and our reactants. It's the measure of freedom of movements between our products in our, and our reactants. In other words, if our entropy increases, if it becomes more positive, that means we have more freedom in our products than our reactants. Now, this delta H, as we saw in a previous lecture, is simply the difference in the bond energies between the products and, and the reactants. In other words, if this term is negative, if we have an exothermic reaction, that means our products have stronger bonds, have more stable bonds than our reactants. If it's positive, that means the opposite is true. The reactants have stronger bonds than our products, and therefore our reactants are more stable. So, therefore, we see that our change in Gibbs free energy is related to both our enthalpy and our entropy, or our difference in bond strength, as well as the difference in order. So, the more order we have in our reactants, or in our product, the smaller our change in S is, the more negative it is. Now, unlike enthalpy, the entropy term depends on temperature and becomes more important at higher temperatures, as we'll see in just a moment. In other words, notice that unlike this term, this term has a temperature dependent part. In other words, the higher the temperature, the larger this value is. The smaller the temperature, the smaller this entire value is. And we'll see why that's important in this example. Let's suppose we have the following reaction. Let's suppose we have an alkene, and this alkene reacts with our hydrobromic acid to produce the following alkane. So let's calculate what the change in H of our reaction is. So let's begin with our reactant side. Let's determine which bonds are broken in our reactant side. Well, we have this pi bond break and we have this HBr uh, bond break. So the amount of energy or kilocals per mole required to break this HBr bond is 87.5 kilocals per mole. The amount of energy required to break this pi bond is 66 kilocals per mole. So now let's go to our product side. Now we have bonds being formed. Remember, whenever bonds are broken, energy needs to be inputted. Whenever bonds are formed, energy is formed or energy is released. So in this case, we have one HC bond that is formed and one CBR bond that is formed. The HC bond releases 101 0.1 kilocals per mole of energy, while the carbon BR bond releases about 72.1 kilocals per mole. So to find the change in energy or change in enthalpy, we simply take the energy required to break the bonds in our reactant side minus the energy released in the bonds that were formed. So we simply add up these two numbers and we subtract these two numbers. And we get negative 19.7 kilocals per mole. In other words, less energy was required to break the bonds than the energy that was produced when the bonds were formed. And that means energy will be released and so our products will be more stable than our reactants. The bonds in our products will be stronger and more stable than the bonds in our reactant side. And that means our change in H is negative, so it's exothermic. So let's take 
this equation here and let's examine what the change in Gibbs free energy of our entire reaction is. Is our reaction spontaneous or non-spontaneous? Recall that change in G determines spontaneity and not change in H. So, notice that in this reaction our change in H term will always be negative and that means we put a negative for this term. What about this term? Well, notice that we go from two molecules to a single molecule. We decrease in the number of molecules. And that means our change in S, we have more order, we have less movement, and so that means our change in S decreases, it's negative. So negative times negative, this whole term will be positive. Remember, this T cannot be negative because we're talking about Kelvin. Uh, the lowest possible temperature for Kelvin is zero. It can't be negative. So, we have a negative and a positive. So now we basically have to figure out which one of these terms will win. If this negative is more negative than this positive, that means our change in G will be negative and we'll have a spontaneous reaction. But, if we have a larger plus term than minus, that means change in G will be positive and we're going to be dealing with a non-spontaneous reaction. So really, there is a competition between the enthalpy and entropy term. At a low temperature, this entire term is small. It's small than this. And that means enthalpy plays a more important role. And enthalpy will probably win in terms of this value being larger than this whole value. But at higher temperatures, at higher T values, this whole term is being multiplied by this delta S. And so this whole term will magnify, will increase, and eventually at some high enough temperature, this will become more positive than this negative, and so the entire term will become positive. And that means at high temperatures, entropy becomes more important. And at high temperatures, because we decrease in entropy at high temperatures, we're going to be dealing with a non-spontaneous reaction because our delta G is positive.